Howdy folks, welcome to another episode of the Weekend Angler. Today is January 4th, 2018, and the high temperature today reached about 19 degrees. It did that about one o'clock, and it's already starting to decline now as our sun's starting to set. But here I am, regardless, out here on Lake of Egypt, and uh, the reason for that is I've been having some trouble with my fish finder, and I'm gonna have to try to figure out what's going on with it, and the only way to do so is to put it out on the water today. So guys, let me show you how to turtle shoot a hummingbird fish finder and transducer. Well guys, the trouble I've been having is the 2D sonar on my Helix 7 here has not been locking bottom very well. Uh, it started out only losing bottom when I'd be running down the lake and here lately I've lost bottom just sitting there and uh, I'm having to turn the sensitivity up on the, on the 2D sonar all the way up just to be able to get a reading off the bottom and, and I'm only fishing you know 15, 20, 30 foot of water max so I've got something going on now I don't know whether that is the transducer or the Y cable or a problem with the fish finder itself. So that's why I'm out here today. And uh, when I had this fish finder installed, what I had them do, I had them put the side imaging transducer on the transom and the 2D sonar actually runs off of the in-haul puck that is epoxy to the inside of the, uh, of the hull underneath the gas tank. And uh, that puck has been in there now for going on about seven years as I actually used that with a uh, 597 CI hummingbird fish finder. So that shows you how old that puck is. But uh, what I'm beginning to wonder is if the puck has reached its end of its usable life or whether the epoxy that holds it to the hull has started to crack and allow an air gap. And uh, so what I'm going to do today, I'm going to be hooking up each transducer individually and running through everything, especially on the 2D sonar to uh, see if I get a good read on the bottom and we're going to start out with the side imaging transducer that is the XNT 9 SI 180T and what I've done I've unplugged both transducer cables from the Hummingbird Y cable and I'm going to plug this transducer in first all right folks I now have the XNT 9 SI 180T. This is the side imaging transducer that is uh, mounted to the transom of the boat. I've got it connected. I've got the Hummingbird Helix 7 here in 2D sonar mode. And I'm going to fire up the outboard and I'm just going to idle around here and uh, see whether we hold bottom. Right now we've actually got a really good lock on the bottom. So uh, that's uh, in and itself is uh, making me confident that I don't have a problem with my Helix head unit here. So I'm going to put my uh, cold weather stuff back on and I'm going to fire up the outboard and I'm just going to idle around. Uh, guys it's going to be noisy so I'll cut the sound off on this but I will zoom in on the screen and uh, you'll be able to see what I'm seeing on the 2D sonar. Well guys, I didn't get up to speed. I didn't put the boat up on plane, but uh, this thing held bottom very well. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna power off the unit. I'm going to plug it in with the uh, XP920T, which is the uh, inside the hull puck transducer. I'm gonna put it, get it hooked up to the uh, Helix 7 here, and we're gonna make another pass over the same area. And we'll see how our uh, bottom looks on that. And if both of those work fine, then we're going to uh, start looking more towards the possibly a uh, defective Y cable. And uh, so let's get that powered off, get transducer changed, and uh, we'll go back over. Well, folks, there's the uh, XP920T transducer. So I'm going to fire up the outboard. I'm going to go over the same area that I did with the uh, side imaging transducer. I'll zoom it again zoom it in again so you guys can take a look at it and we're going to see if this thing loses bottom at all. Well 
Well, that's a good sign. The uh, XP920T, that's the puck transducer that's uh, inside the hull, has held bottom this entire time. So, unfortunately, the, uh, the next step is going to be to get up on plane and uh, run down the lake with this. I'm going to do it with the puck transducer only connected to the unit. And I'm going to see if we lose bottom at all. And if it holds bottom during that, then I'm going to uh, get everything hooked back up with the Y cable and see if we start losing bottom again. Uh, at this point, I'm leaning towards the possibility of a defective Y cable because we're getting two good sonar returns on the both on the puck and the side imaging transducers. So uh, I'm going to hold out, hope that it's a Y cable. Those are about twenty dollars as opposed to uh, seventy-five for transducer. So we get everything fired up and. Uh, we're going to run down the lake on plane. I don't know that I'm going to be able to uh, have the camera on during that. I think it might try to take flight, but if I can figure out a way to do it, I'll get it done. If not, I'll tell you what it did. That big old fish arch right there too. The guys it held bottom. Uh, had a little bit of turbulence, but uh, that's nothing like it, it was doing before. It was completely going away. So with that being said, I'm going to hook the Y cable back up, hook it up the way I run it all the time. I'm gonna give it another shot down this frozen lake and uh, see if we lose bottom and uh, we'll find out if it's a bad Y cable or uh, what we got going on. So give me just a second, I can make the, uh, make the hook up so we'll try it again. All right, well the uh, Y cable's been hooked back up. We'll get my mask on, get the outboard fired up and uh, we'll make another pass down the lake and we'll see if we lose bottom. Well, as you can see, it didn't take long to start experiencing problems. Before I was even up on plane, the helix started reading a depth of 2.6 feet. And as you can see from the bottom return, I'm in over 10 feet of water. The giant band at the top of the screen only appears when connected through the Y cable. But let's go ahead and hit cruising speed just to see what happens. Well, folks, that's about all we can do today. I'm going to have to get another Y cable and repeat the test that I've done. Uh, it is nice that uh, both the puck transducer and the side imaging transducer are giving me good readings on the uh, on the 2D sonar. So uh, odds are both of the transducers are good. Uh, the Y cable, like I said, is about a twenty or thirty dollar part. So if something's got to go bad, I prefer it to be that. Guys, as always, thank you for watching my videos. Like, share, subscribe, comment below. I hope I've helped you out. I hope if you're having trouble with your hummingbird, you now see that there's a, uh, a method to test this, and I will put the uh, write out all the steps to testing a uh, test your transducers on the description of this video. So, guys, take care. We'll catch you out.